So what uh, uh, what we want to talk about now? Oh, this is what, what this is what we called it. We called it hidden talents. Okay? I want to talk a bit about neurodiversity um, and particularly uh, neurodiversity in terms of um, in terms of uh, recruitment, in terms of hiring, but also in terms of managing employees. And uh, because uh, um, I assume that many people were like me and really have no clear idea what neurodiversity is. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that too at the uh, uh, at uh, uh, at the beginning. Okay, um, so this is just to ramble on here. But how how did it all start, right? So at some stage during the um, uh, during the lockdowns and the various uh, forums that sprung up online, including this one uh, and others, I bumped into Peter, and. Um, at the next uh, online forum, I bumped into him again, and um, you know, so, so we all we all listened to each other, and uh, uh, and I was like, well, um, uh, he is a gentleman who clearly has experience, but uh, uh, but he uh, uh, he seems a bit odd, if I say that myself, you know, and I couldn't really sort of make anything of it, and um, uh, and then I really didn't didn't bother anymore with it. And so then two things happened. A, uh, Peter very kindly joined uh, one of my um, mentoring sessions where I had no mentors, uh, no mentees at all, and I was just sitting around in an empty online space. Uh, and um, and that, that gave us a chance to, to have a really good one-to-one -one conversation. And... Um, and he said, have you ever heard about uh, neurodiversity? And I said, uh, uh, no, I haven't. What is it? Um, and, and, and then, um, so, you know, he, um, uh, he started to tell me about, uh, uh, um, about the, whole, you know, the whole subject as it, as it were. Uh, and, uh, and that's what became, when, when for me, sort of many things became very clear. Uh, when I started to understand uh, um, so people I've come across in the past, um, in the past better. Okay. And where I, um, to, 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 to some extent, also felt like, oh, okay, so now, um, uh, now I understand. Uh, but I also felt a little bit um, like, why didn't I, why didn't I bother to uh, to understand this earlier? Okay. So what we're talking about, uh, uh, we're talking about here the concept of neurodiversity is really um, uh, neurological differences between between people and it's about recognizing and, and respecting those uh, those differences just as we um as we're already respecting and recognizing differences in terms of race in terms of gender in terms of uh, in terms of uh, physical ability okay? um so uh, obviously comes from latin the word in terms of neuro that is relating to nerves and the nervous system diversity uh being um the fact that we're not all the same uh, and um, uh, and diverse itself uh, saying that there is a great a great diversity a great variety um, uh, and, and very many differences uh, that they are but in the end okay um, in in the end we're all the same just like two um, uh, two people rarely have the same physical abilities also two people will rarely have the same uh, the same two brains as it as it were so what we're talking about here is um are, are uh, things that are labeled as dyspraxia dyslexia uh, attention deficit uh, uh, hyperactivity disorder um anything on the autistic spectrum uh, Tourette syndrome and a number of uh, uh, and a number of other uh conditions for the best for the for the want of a of a, of a better of a better word um so we're talking about things that are uh, by and large, difficult to spot. Okay, look, it's very easy to spot a physical uh, disability. It's very easy to spot things like uh, like like gender and race, um, but it is much more difficult to um, uh, to spot neurodiversity um, or, or neurodiverse conditions. And uh, uh, because of that, um, there are. Uh, there are issues here, uh, first in terms of, of statistics, which is, which is where it all starts, okay? Uh, chances are 
that's um, you already know uh, uh, a neurodiverse person. Um, if anyone is uh, if anyone is an avid Netflix uh, watcher and has uh, um, uh, and likes the old uh, detective series and the old crime series, there's a series out there called The Bridge, uh, which is set on the bridge between um, uh, between Denmark and Sweden, and uh, features a detective team where the Swedish detective um, uh, very clearly is on the spectrum. Uh, so that's just uh, uh, just just an example from the movies, but. Um, because it's, it's by and large um, harder to spot, uh, also means that diagnosis rates vary widely between countries um, as to the criteria. Generally, uh, women and girls, for example, are much less likely to be uh, to be diagnosed, um, particularly with autism or ADHD. Um, uh, People of color are less likely to get uh, to get an accurate uh, diagnosis, right? Okay? Um, and and very often, and I personally, I find this also a bit of a, a bit of a shame. So this is this is all classified as uh, disabled, okay? Um, as having special needs, um, uh, it might be learning difficulties or, or sort of other uh, disorders, where. Um, in reality, or very often, and this is what we what what we want to talk really about in this session, is that it's not so much um, uh, it's not so much special needs. It's um, is that they uh, they it's unique strength and unique abilities, and um, uh, and this, when it comes to the recruitment process and when it comes to managing people process, uh, can be of huge benefit to uh, uh, to companies. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to uh, uh, to Peter, and I'm just going to uh, forward um, the slides as and when he tells me to. Peter, take it on. Uh, just let me know when you want me to click the button here. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my condition is called Asperger's. Uh, it's called the Asperger's syndrome, and I got diagnosed with this about eight years back. It was quite a, a revelation. Uh, basically, a uh, Martin's outline the conditions. Um, so they're really what I call labels. Um, and actually, there is quite a bit of a diverse thinking, learning, processing and behaving by people on this particular spectrum of uh, diversity, neurodiversity. Um, what I have noticed is a lot of organisations have what's called an equal opportunities um, uh, program and um, people disclose their disabilities and uh, generally uh, it seems that only about three percent of, of their workforce has a disability where is in in reality it could be between 10 and 15. Uh, there is a reason why people don't disclose it it's normally uh, held uh, held against them uh, next slide please uh, yes yeah, so um, one of the big things about having uh, uh, neurodiverse uh, disabilities is that you suffer from what's called in the trade meltdowns, okay? You can be over or under sensitive to uh, smells, lights, colors. This does give a problem uh, because uh, when you melt down, you need to go and rest a while and employers are not happy about uh, employees that need to be taking frequent rest breaks. Um, the other problem is um, to actually read people. Um, the facial cues are quite hard to um, interpret and sometimes um, you, you can accidentally offend people. Um, the other thing is um, how long is a piece of string? Uh, you could spend weeks, months on a project that might actually only take a week. Uh, time management and time planning is a big problem. Uh, secondly, um, is actually um, recognizing people's names. Uh, I personally used to have a big uh, wall chart with everybody's uh, name and picture. And I needed those two pieces of information so that I could uh, politely call somebody by their their name or first name. Uh, so uh, a lot of people uh, don't generally uh, identify as neurodiverse. Um, it's generally frowned upon and a lot of people revert to what I call the feeble-minded option. 
oh, he must be, she must be feebly minded. Uh, and therefore they uh, talk down to you. Uh, so um, warning people or employers that you want reasonable accommodation does ring some alarm bells. Next slide, please. So, I mean, um, airports are particularly troublesome. Uh, the airlines are very geared to people that use wheelchairs. If you are, have a physical disability, they'll wheel you uh, right through the system, through the back gates, the back doors. If you are affected by bright lights, heavy noise and background with a lot of uh, announcements, actually it's very difficult for you to get to the right uh, gate in time to catch your connection. But some of the airlines are now getting up to speed. Um, there is some reading there on the um, National Geographic. Uh, next slide, please. So a lot of people on, uh, on the spectrum are actually long-term unemployed. They actually uh, generally end up working as a volunteer in charity shops. There are a few that are uh, defined as geeks or nerds, and they're basically put in a back room and have to um, get on with <laughs> number crunching. Uh, so there are some issues uh, in social interaction and communication. Uh, employers sometimes are not very honest and uh, they don't uh, like to um, be factual with people in case they offend them. Uh, also, there's a lot of meetings in the workplace and quite frankly, um, these um, pre-Zoom uh, were often dominated by extroverts. Um, but if you are quiet, you can easily get overlooked. Uh, there is also a problem on um, the speed of different thinkers. So we have what's called high functioning and low functioning uh, people on the spectrum. Um, one thing that is very important, particularly in the hospitality industry, is what we call the team working and team spirit. And often uh, people on the spectrum are considered to be loners and they're generally not included in the social small chit chat or the uh, office outings, office parties. Uh, next slide, please. Well, how about some value? Uh, that neurodiverse employees can bring. Uh, I think uh, employers need to deal uh, with somebody that has disclosed on a on a one to one basis. Uh, but actually, um, you could find that you could get some very good out of the box thinking and some very creative solutions uh, to uh, the environment, your particular uh, work study or work plans. Uh, because there is a different way of thinking. And so a lot of neurodiverse people could give lots of uh, suggestions, hips and tints about simplifying the business process and maybe making some innovative products or services. So, for example, in Los Angeles, Stockholm and uh, Copenhagen, a lot of, some IT companies only hire people on the spectrum uh, because they find that they are really um, doing and finding problems before they actually arise. Uh, next slide, please. So, seeing things uh, before they exist, uh, uh, reorganizing work programs, uh, getting bogged down in the detail of things uh, so they can do a, a, a work analysis or person spec analysis, uh, looking at the core business, which is quite important. Uh, but the problem is that um, they don't know um, the unwritten rules in the workplace. And so they don't know what is taboo and what are the boundaries. Uh, so, generally uh, trying to help them improve awareness uh, uh, 
they are very good at looking for patterns. Uh, so particularly in manufacturing or the likes, and they can be quite deep thinkers. So if you want to consult and whatever, uh, next slide, please. Now, this is a, a resource we're, uh, we're going to share with you. It is a, a video clip of an actress uh, that has dyslexia. And uh, that is well worth looking at because um, she then uh, gives what she, what she calls the power of dyslexia, the gift of dyslexia. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So, uh, Germany is well ahead of the curve um, in terms of dealing with uh, diversity and neurodiverse people. <clears throat> They've got Autocom, which is an IT company, again, looking for geeks and nerds in, in, the, in the neurodiverse population. <clears throat> also, they've got Diversicom, which will help people to get into the workforce. Here, you've only got the disability officer at the job center, uh, and a lot of employers are not very happy to hire neurodiverse people. Also, a rising tide is another one you could look at. And there is, it's good for low functioning um, autism people because they can really, uh, uh, if they've got the right tools, do a great job on something as simple as cleaning cars. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, some employers are, are, are realizing that there is an untapped resource out there. Uh, Dell um, and Microsoft are ahead of the game. They are looking for uh, people to do software uh, analysis for them. Some of the big uh, accounting companies are also looking, uh, as, as well as uh, other IT companies. Uh, that's quite a good resource uh, that you'll have for looking at any initiatives. Uh, there could be some money out of it. Next slide, please. Okay, so it's really rare that disabilities are truly invisible. You generally do pick up. Uh, it's hard to adjust because uh, there are a lot of fears and unease uh, from uh, co-workers about working and dealing with uh, divergent people. There's a lot of myths, assumptions and stereotypes which are flagged out in the media. But disability is often the way that society is organized and differences are not really uh, light. So a lot of people on the spectrum actually spend a lot of time in what I call masking on trying to look normal. But uh, they do suffer sensory overload and they do uh, need to get included. And just because somebody is wearing noise cancelling headphones doesn't mean that they're listening to heavy rock music at work. They're basically trying to center down and focus on, on the work. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, there, there, there is no more. This is uh, uh, this is kind of we have reached the end. You've already summed it up to some extent, and and I mean I would just like because there's some sort of way is is a cooperation here between uh, uh, between Peter and me. So I mean I I just think having previously not given much thought about this, okay, but obviously um, uh, having um, having spent considerable time to make recruitment in 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 my hotels more diverse in terms of the, the, the obvious, the visible things. Right? Um, I, people who know me better, they, 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 they know that I am very quick to point out uh, if somebody is running a conference where they have a panel and there is not a single woman or there's only one woman on the panel. Okay? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually one of these people who will say like, what, you, 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 you didn't find a woman to include on your panel? Uh, or, or, you know, um, so, so this type of stuff. But, um, uh, but then the, the invisible side never really occurred to me. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is, um, look, if we want to be um, welcoming, which of course is our job in hospitality, if you want to be welcoming and if you want to um, uh, 
if we want to attract guests to our uh, to our hotels to our properties to our restaurants then um then it just makes sense if they are uh if 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 we have diverse teams that match the the diversity of our guests right uh everybody feels more at ease if they're being attended to or if they're being served or if they encounter somebody in a place where they say Oh, I, I feel this person comes from where I'm coming from. This person really understands me. Uh, so, so there are potentially um, huge benefits from 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 that side too. Because I spent a lot of time looking at change and innovation in the, in the industry. Uh, the point that Peter um, mentioned in terms of uh, neurodiverse people thinking about things in a different manner. Uh, is is um, additionally very interesting to me because very often uh, you are in an environment, you spend a lot of time in this environment, and you become sort of blind to how you could do things differently. And um, uh, and if you then have somebody who um, who looks at things from a really different angle, uh, look, I, you know, it might turn out to be complete and utter rubbish, but it might also turn out to be absolutely brilliant and something that you've never thought about. Uh, so um, so that for me is also um, uh, is, is, a, is another very important point. Uh, but um, question, uh, questions and, 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 and answers. Uh, I'm just reading through the um, um, reading through the chat here. Uh, somebody said. Um, uh, Oh uh, yeah, wait. Who is this? Um, oh, John said that uh, they are about to hire a highly functional autistic girl. Uh, okay, so so right. Another says fascinating. Perhaps this knowledge should be part of mental health awareness training. Um, I don't know, Peter. Do you, do you think uh, that there should be uh, this should be included in um, uh, in mental health awareness training? Well, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure uh, mental health has a certain connotation so for example uh, if suddenly your GP uh, writes a sick note to say you're suffering from depression that you usually find there's a p45 heading your way sometime soon uh, but mental first aid is is something um, uh, we, uh, we we could put it under a general banner uh, I'm, I'm I think it could be uh, more on what I call the equal opportunities training framework. I, I agree. I agree. I think I think by putting it into this sort of mental health awareness training, you, you're pushing this into the wrong um, into the wrong box, as it were. And I'm not. I'm not saying that mental health isn't isn't important. It is. Okay. Um, but but I don't think this will fit super well in there. I think it really ought to sit in a in a. Um, uh, in training and and uh, uh, um, sort of culture of of diversity. Okay, this is um, this is what we as a, as an organization are setting out to be. Okay, uh, I think that's where it would sit. Um, uh, yeah, well yes, under. absolutely. I mean, the diversity initiatives uh, quite often focus on gender or race. That is, uh, and then there are photographs taken of the diversified mm. workforce but obviously uh, uh, if you have an invisible disability the photograph won't really uh, reveal the uh, the diversity so so that is a problem but i keep hearing that the hospitality industry is short on staff and you've got all of these people uh, sat at home wo uh, working in a charity shop uh, uh, actively looking uh, for work and because they've had so many turndowns, uh, they're, they're sort of like uh, 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 under the carpet. Do we, do we, is that, it, it, I don't, I mean, does the hospitality industry have a, a, a fear of, of, you know, it's the same as, it's not just about that disabled people or diverse people. It's like, Oh, you can't work in. We don't want black people in this particular establishment, or we don't want gay people in this place. Are we too worried about the type of people we actually have working for us? Do you think the customer really cares? Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Do you know? Do you think? I I I, I don't know. I I think I think I know what you mean because um I 
was um, or my wife was part of the recruitment process uh, for the reopening of the Armani Hotel in uh, in Dubai, and that was possibly one of the most uh, racist and and undiverse recruitment processes I've ever been uh, aware of. Okay, every single employee um, had to look like. They had to fit into an Armani suit, essentially, and and the 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 a full like every employee, like every applicant, had to submit a full length picture of themselves, and it would be sent to Italy, and they would they it would come back saying this one's too fat, this one's too black, this one is too this, this one is too that. Okay, so in the end, you ended up with lots of beautiful people who were utterly utterly dumb, um, who didn't know what a hotel was who didn't know because because they, they might have worked in the fashion they might have worked in an armani boutique before right and that's why they were hired but you ask them can you bring me an iron sorry what is an iron like like you know zero um uh, zero customer service so uh i think some brands perhaps are like that uh, uh but overall i feel that we we uh, I mean, there are also positive examples. Like in Sweden, we have a fast food chain here that's about as big, if not bigger, as McDonald's, and it, they have written into their um, into their values, into their culture that uh, they are going to employ uh, people um, with 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 all sorts of disabilities, so long as they can work, and that includes also um, neurodiverse conditions. What What do people think then about positive discrimination to? build inclusivity into companies? So, uh, just quickly, I mean, I don't want to just talk over people, but, but um, positive discrimination is, is, is an interesting, I find an interesting concept, okay? I've, um, I was part, a couple of years ago, I was part on, uh, of, of a discussion to, about uh, positive discrimination in terms of um, women in leadership positions in the hospitality. I didn't speak, obviously, but I, I was part of a group that put together this this, this event, and and um, the panel was all female, and they they were also split. Okay, because some felt that I don't want to be um, I don't want to be let us say positively discriminated, uh, uh, so that I I then end up uh, in a job where I think like, hey, did I only get here because uh, because uh, because of of being a woman because of being this or be because of being that okay no i want to know that i got here uh, because of my skills because of what i can bring uh, having said that um uh, of course to some extent legislation um or, or, or a little bit of force can help to actually create uh to to, to sort of make companies because companies much like a lot of people are just lazy if they don't absolutely have to do it they will not do it right so if if, if we give a bit of a push to get that process kick-started uh, once you have a couple of people in 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 the right position it will then take on a momentum and we might not need uh positive discrimination going forward that, that's that's my opinion yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we could uh, use some role models. That might be one way forward. I mean, has anybody heard of Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? Are, they, are these people known? Uh, because they are, uh, they have a condition called Asperger's. Mm. <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody suggested. I wonder if it's fear by the employer of the employee with filtering challenges getting the business in trouble. Um, uh, personally, I think it's perhaps not even about. Um, it's not even about this specific um, issue. I think it's generally a fear. Okay, you've got to like. Um, you might not want to look stupid. Okay, uh, you you might not want to admit that you don't know. Okay, um, and and because because it is not something that that you can see, look, it's easy enough to say, uh, uh, tell you, oh, here's an employee who only has one leg. Uh, therefore, we need to make an accommodation for that uh, in terms of our back office areas and such and so forth. But fair enough. Um, you don't need to uh, uh, you don't need to necessarily ask too many questions about that. Uh, but here we face with conditions that are a all extremely different and can present themselves in like in in, in a multitude of of, of uh, shades okay so you need to ask questions and i think a lot of people are probably uncomfortable with that 
Yes, exactly. This is what Alan says. The like, problem is that uh, it's not the guests or the clients that worry, it's the management and the supervisory level that uh, that are either not aware or that uh, have little time to understand um, these conditions and the effects. Yeah, that's, that's I, I would agree with that. Um, Alan, you're in the you're in the whole recruitment side of things. What 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 do you think can be done to sort of to to make this to make to improve the situation with these this type well, of recruitment? It's, it's a situation I've wrestled with for a while because my youngest son is now twenty one. He's autistic and on the spectrum, and we've had a virtual well, his lifetime of getting to grips with. The cause and effects of what happens, you know, socially awkward situations, and yet, a couple of years ago, just before the pandemic started, we went away to Menorca for a holiday with him, and his behaviour completely changed in a different environment, with the staff at the hotel, with the um, the animation team who do all the entertainments on these resorts. Um, he was involved with them from day from day one, whereas back here getting him to meet people or even saying good morning to people in a situation where he, you couldn't understand why he had to do that uh, has always been a bit of a challenge. Um, and I guess I go back to my time when I was younger, a sort of 17, 21 year old in the industry. We never really had these conditions. They, they didn't seem to exist. You were either socially awkward or just shy or not a good team player. So the management and supervisory would push those people away from frontline operations and you then you then end up in the back room or housekeeping or somewhere like that where you were out of harm's way I, I think but it has been a lot of um as you say this is particularly relevant to my situation because things have changed as he's now left school and the industry or the society seems to say to people you're now out of the school system you're cured you go off and become an adult well you don't you still have those same vulnerable issues the likes of steve jobs or uh, as he had or he, even Elon musk there are clearly um indicators or personality traits that, that, that people still see him as odd um but how we get the industry to relate to that i guess only through things like this it's far more relevant now where the need for for more staff and staff who are loyal um who can uh, you know, maybe five days out of seven or four days out of five deal with the situations they're faced with it, i think it's just down to education and talking about it people don't seem to or still seem to shy away from it um i think people are afraid of of the condition once, once they know someone has asperger's or autism in some form there's a reluctance to engage and i don't know how we get over that almost racial like quality of, of dealing with racially in, uh, issues from years past. I think it's just a difficult one, but I think it is making a, an inroad, but I think we've got a long way to go before we can get the, the, the employers to wake up and see that there, there are intelligent people. You mentioned uh, certain companies looking for people like, like this, even the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad looks for people with Asperger's and, and, and autism to become co-breakers and, and detailed an analysts. So whether that's a role for revenue management or, or reservations, there's just clearly um, um, a need to recognize that the skill sets come with a certain condition that we need to understand and be cognizant of. I don't know how we get there quick, quickly, but I think we can do it. I think, I think in general, from my experience, you, you hit on one word as well. I've, I've found that people who have got some sort of dis disability and, or whatever and are actually welcomed into an operation are actually the most, the most dependable and the most, yeah. the most, um, the most, you know, the, the ones you can depend on most, the ones that will always work for the, co you know, go for the company and, and all that. It, it, it's, it's a strange anomaly that actually the people who, who you can employ, who actually will be your best employees, actually people don't want to employ them. It's, it's, it's very yes, strange. It's yeah, there is a, it's just a strangeness because there's a hotel near me where they have a, a chap who's clearly got Asperger's. He's been with the hotel through three different owners. It's only a small one, sort of 45 bedrooms. And I meet a lot of people there for coffees and so on. He's the first one to come up and say hello. And he's almost like a, how can I put it, not when to be derogatory, almost like a being bounded upon by a fresh sort of pu puppy a, a approach. He's really pleased to see everybody and goes out of his way to to make you feel welcome. And yet you can see the new management when they took over recently, there was a reticence in 
an almost embarrassment about his behavior until I had a word with one of the new management and said, look, no, he's, he's your best asset, leave him alone. Uh, he will certainly be, be here for you probably long after you've gone. And he must have worked there 25, 35 years now, uh, sort of man and boy, but uh, a, a more normal, wonderful person, puts a smile on your face, uh, very guest welcoming. Uh, and you can forgive him some foibles, whether it be invoice relating or getting bills and so on. Other people can do that with him. And I think he's, he's an absolute asset. But it, how you get that change of mindset in in a management company or a, you know, an HR perspective who might think, oh, this chap's got that. He's declared it. This chap hasn't. So I'll take that one because it's going to be less work. There's almost that um, uh, issue that we have to get over. And I guess more people that get exposed to these people, perhaps there is a, a genuinely a more appreciative understanding of what, 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 what they have to offer. But it is a shame, as, as Martin was saying, the industry is crying out for people. You've got people who are capable of doing this, um, who are probably still being sidelined as a result of a, a recognised or perceived condition. Alan, you, you, you raised a really interesting, sorry, it's Julian. You, you raised yeah. a really interesting point just then, didn't you? Um, so uh, you you flagged that your son, um, who who can be um, uh, quieter, yes. more reserved, yeah. and yet that individual that you just spoke about, who's very forward, um, yeah. you know, and and smiley face, and and it, and it highlights just in simple terms highlights the massive difference um, in. Uh, people who have these different conditions. So mm. my, my, young, my youngest son uh, is very high functioning, uh, autistic and has ADHD. Ah, um, nice. And, and we, we, were, we were at a school meeting uh, yesterday, just going through some bits and pieces. Um, and somebody who just helps him on occasion, through bits and pieces at school, um, was very quick to point out, um, you know, if you, if, you had, if, if you had a child who was in a wheelchair, using this you know, very visual impact. Mm. Child in a wheelchair, you would not ask that child to get out of their wheelchair and run 100 meters. You have, you have uh, an autistic child who uh, on sports day, in a chaotic environment, Absolutely. for that individual, the environment is chaotic, you know, and you're asking them to run 100 meters no, I can't, I can't process this. I don't want to do it. I feel out of my comfort zone. I'm not yeah, comfortable. Close down. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, and so it's this, this enormous um, diversity of diversity, if you will. And so finding within hospitality, within the, in the enormous range of roles that are there, finding the right roles to fit the right people so that, so that, they can, the individuals can flourish, the business can benefit, and if nothing else, it highlights the need of trying to, trying to put the right person in the right place at the right time, yes. matching needs of the business, matching needs of the individual for the benefit of everybody. And we all know that that spectrum, that range of that spectrum is so wide that it's not easy to fit people into positions but by goodness gracious me, by understanding people through talking through into interview process, whatever the interview is, you can get to the bottom of this and you can find roles, not for everybody, because not everybody is for every industry, but you can find roles where individuals will flourish and where the business will flourish. Yes. And it takes an intelligent employer to realise that process. Yeah. And I think it's also just so intelligent employees need to recognise that there will be uh, cause and effects depending on certain situ situations. I mean, I, I, we realised very early on when we had sort of children's birthday parties that the one person sitting on 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 the stairs away from the crowd was himself at yeah. his own party, and we kind yeah. of realised there was an issue there. So certainly, you know, putting someone into you can run the staff disco today is not going to work because it's going to be a sensory <laughs> overload and will close down for two or two or three days at least. Yes. It's, it's just being aware of those sort of situations. I don't know how or whether the industry as yet at middle management level has the, the patience or the tolerance, uh, the pressure that it might be under to be able to, okay, I'm, I, I recognise this, I'll need to deal with him or her. It'll take me another 20 minutes to have that com conversation and move them somewhere else while, while, while we address that sort of sensory issue. 
Well, um, well, well that, absolutely. But I mean, getting back to the bottom line, which is what businesses want to minimize costs or increase sales. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a scheme, uh, if you're UK, and we mentioned some in Germany, it's called the Access to Work Scheme. Mm -hmm. And the a Department of Work and Pensions will put quite a lot of money, up to about £20,000, to um, assist somebody that has a disability to slot into the workplace. And it could be a, a whole range of things you're able to claim. Uh, so it could be uh, uh, really helping the bottom line as well. Uh, yeah. uh, people often look at costs and benefits with these uh, staff members and they think that there might be a burden, but some do come with a big pot of money uh, and uh, employers don't seem to be uh, tapping into this access to work scheme. I think maybe they just can't see the bigger picture yet. I think they're, they're still worried about the effects more so on their own customers who don't seem to have the, the issues that perhaps the management and supervisory guys do. But, but I think also to, to, to some extent it's funny because if you, um, like in many cases now, if you are tendering, like if you're, if you're um, uh, replying to an RFP, uh, this is for us, if you're replying to an RFP, uh, you have very strict um there are many points which go beyond the actual accommodation and the provision of services. And, and these might be health and safety things, but it might also be uh, for, for a lot of the large international, the, the, the international companies, they might also be diverse things, okay? Like, do you have, like, a, a, you know, how many women do you have in leadership, blah, blah, blah. Implying that, um, look, we want to stay in hotels that, um, that are diverse places because we, because we as an organization want to, uh, uh, want, want to support that. So in the end, um, uh, of course, the money talks. This is, this is one way of supporting things, right? Yes. Uh, but by putting your money where your mouth is. But, um, but, but this also never covers uh, these type of things. I mean, you never see an RFP that says, "How many neurodiverse people do you employ? Do you do you yeah. employ in your organization?" Right? Uh, or, or, or um, like, it will also never ask about the things like. I mean, it will it will say like, "What uh, what facilities do you have in place for for people in a wheelchair? Or what facilities do you have in place for blind people or or, or deaf people?" Uh, yeah. This this type of thing always they ask you for this, okay? But but they never uh, they never um, ask you about uh, about other things. The yeah. the other week I read an article about the supermarket. Uh, I think it was in the UK. Uh, or was in Germany. I can't. I forgot now. Anyway, the whole point was that uh, they now have um, uh, once a week they have two hours where they switch off all the background music, all the store announcements, all the the the, the, the bright flashing lights to make um, to make it a quiet shopping experience. And they actually put up signs explaining all of this. And you know, this is this is not going to fix the world. This is not going to like uh, you know. Eh, but um, but. And it might there might only be like five people who who actually benefit from it, but it, it, I I like say it, it, more people will benefit from it because they're being exposed to that. Okay, they might have never known that this is an issue for some people. Uh, so then by going to the shop and saying, "Hang on a second, what's happening here?" Uh, you know, there is no music, there is no announcements, and then they read the sign. They say, "Oh, okay." Then they start to you know this is it always takes something to kick off that 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 thinking process, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we do it with disabled people, as you say, with bathrooms, wheel ramps, and we embraced all of that, but we just haven't embraced the uh, the mental issues that are um, are there in front of us, but we just don't want to seem to acknowledge. Well, well, well absolutely. I mean, um, so for example, a supermarket is a very stressful place for mm -hmm. a neurodiverse person. And uh, it's made even more stressful because... Um, uh, what happens is uh, the store detectives are watching uh, on CCTV the customers walking through yeah. and they end up following people on the spectrum uh, because they're exhibiting the same uh, um, coups as um, shoplifters. And so they have a problem uh, when they get to check out in that they are deemed to have been shoplifting. Uh, even me personally, I've had my bag searched, uh, and I, really? because I'm meticulous about receipts, uh, uh, but it can be quite an intimidating experience. And hotels also uh, possibly the same. Uh, and security, uh, obviously, uh, 
quite rightly, uh, looking for uh, uh, unusual behaviour. Yeah, it's deviations from the normal behaviour. I mean, the irony here is my older son is a store detective security with Tesco's. <laughs> uh, we've got both sides of the spectrum covered there. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's true because people do in hotels look at abnormal behaviour. There's a touch of game keeper there, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, you don't black hair. But so, uh, you know, even uh, some of the professional bodies are offering diversity shields, but the mm. shield wearers are normally uh, based on gender, race, or sexual orientation. Uh, um, yes. It's almost a visual acceptance of the differences, perhaps not uh, the unforeseen ones. Yeah, because also, because, because, I mean, it's not just about the visible and the invisible, it's also about, uh, personally, I find it's also about the easiness of, of, of being able to explain it. Okay, mm. hey, and, 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 and physical disabilities are just easier to explain, um, in, in that sense, right? Uh, usually, something has happened to you and 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 and, and, and as a result uh, xyz is impossible right uh whereas whereas with these with neurodiverse conditions it's just uh, as i said also before you know said it, there is just so many more nuances out there than uh, than with physical disabilities well, 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 well absolutely have you heard of this uh, chain it's called travel chef uh, they only they like to hire people with dyslexia, um, mm. uh, you know. Uh, so th there are uh, lots of gifts out there. Um, uh, it is a hidden world, but uh, quite frankly, uh, people don't get through the interview process and True. don't get hired. Uh, that is a problem. There is uh, a big uh, proportion of people. That, end up having to live on uh, disability allowances and universal credit. And it is such a, a waste it's of shame, uh, resources, particularly as we're getting short of people uh, now in the hospitality industry. I think the problem is that these days when somebody is, is, is promoted through a business, it's very rare that they even get trained how to interview a normal person. Never yes. mind how to interview a, somebody who might have actually some kind of oh, God, yes. or, or whatever, you know, they, they just don't understand the, the intricacies of actually getting, doing a decent interview. So, so and it, it, they kind of just shy away from anything that causes a, 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 an inconvenience when they, yes, they are, they're rather than actually. Very true, very true. Yeah. Yes, very true. But, uh, mm. it, was, it was interesting though what you said, at the moment everybody's talking about sustainability and and yes, sort of companies are saying, well, how sustainable is, is, are you if I want to come and stay with you? It, it, it needs to be more a case of, well, yeah, pr pr the, com the clients themselves almost need to be encouraged to say, well, well how diverse are you? you know, what, how, many, how many people do you have working for you who, who, who have a disability or this or the other? And it, yeah. it's, it's, it's sort of like, it's, it seems the only way to actually make the companies change their their vision is, is actually the clients changing it for them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, some of these logos like the two ticks scheme for guaranteeing an interview are that the, the disability confident employers are mainly awarded by the Department of Work and Pensions, but actually they don't really vet them. It's just one of the many badges that organizations do on the public relations front unfortunately, and that is a great shame. Uh